Hey everyone, it's Dr. Andrew Wolf here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is on metabolic acidosis, and it's part of a series on interpreting ABGs. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about common causes of metabolic acidosis and how to determine the cause by differentiating a non-GAP versus a high-GAP metabolic acidosis. And then within the high gap category to determine whether the likely cause is from endogenous acids from that are created within the body itself versus a toxic substance or an exogenous acid. So just a reminder, I do have another video about how to determine whether you have an anion gap or not using an ABG and basic chemistries. Um, so see that video if you need more information about that. So just a reminder of what an anion gap is, is remember that we have to have um, a, an electrically neutral solution because our um, serum is always electrically ne neutral. It's the law of electric neutrality. And basically that means that when we have single ions like sodium and, and chloride and bicarbonate that, have, that are um, either a single positive ion or a single negative ion, they need to have an equal number. So what we have here is I'm going to have cations in this column and anions in this column. And these two columns always have to be equal. So in the extracellular space, the main cation is sodium. And as you remember, the normal values for sodium are 135 to 145 milliequivalents. Then the other major cation is potassium. with a value of 3.5 to 5-ish milliequivalents. Now, on the anion side, the major anion that we have is chloride, with a value of around 95 to 105 milliequivalents. And then we have bicarb. with a normal value of around 22 to 26 milliequivalents. Now, these are the major cations and anions that we measure on a regular basis. So what we have here, this here is our anion gap. Now, an anion gap is just things that we are not measuring because remember the anions and the cations have to be equal so the unmeasured things the most common unmeasured things is phosphate and amino acids or albumin so in a normal healthy person an anion gap will be 16 milliequivalents plus or minus 4 now, some people calculate the anion gap with, without including potassium. If that's the case, if you don't include potassium, then you're going to have a normal anion gap of 12 milliequivalents, plus or minus 4. All right, so in a situation where we already know that we have a metabolic acidosis and we've got a pH, say, that equals 7.2, um, this can occur if, if this is a non-gap acidosis and the gap is normal. This is, can only happen if there, is, there is a relative decrease in the amount of bicarbonate or a relative increase in the amount of chloride. And this can happen for two reasons. Basically, that the, the kidney is not conserving HCO3 
So this can happen because of acute or chronic renal dysfunction. Or if you have hyperchloremia, and hyperchloremia is typically an iatrogenic event that occurs because of um, giving so much too much too much chloride. So if if you give someone a, an infusion of you know three four liters of normal saline, you may actually cause a non gap acidosis by increasing the amount of chloride. All right, so okay, so that covers a non gap acidosis. Just to review, a non gap acidosis can be caused by two things. One is a decrease in bicarb preservation in the kidneys, and this is typically due to renal failure. Or an increase in chloride ions, and this is typically iatrogenic from normal saline administration. So if we have a high gap, so we have an anion gap that is greater than 20 mL equivalents per liter. So this gap has gotten very large. This suggests that there um, basically are too many acids, too much acid in the blood, and that is, um, that is our unmeasured anions. So a high gap acidosis can basically be caused by two major things. It can be caused by an increase in endogenous acids and the most common are going to be lactic acid. Ketones or keto acids uremia, or uric acid, and phosphoric acid can typically become a problem in issues with chronic renal failure, etc. Now, the other type of high gap is going to be exogenous acids, and these are basically toxins or overdoses. For example, methanol, poisoning, salicylate overdose, ethylene glycol, and some other poisons like um, tooling from sniffing glue, etc. So typically we are asked to learn the, uh, the mnemonic mud piles to try to remember uh, help us remember what things to look at in terms of differentials when we have a person with acute metabolic acidosis. My suggestion is before looking at mnemonics, you first just make a differentiation about whether you think this is likely an endogenous acid or an exogenous acid. If it's an endogenous acid, then you have fairly limited causes. So you need to think about lactic acidosis. And lactic acidosis is caused by anaerobic metabolism. So do you have a situation where you have either global or local hypoxia? Is there issues with um, delivery of oxygen to tissues? Is there issues with hypoxemia, etc.? Um, for ketones, you need to think about DKA. So is this a person that um, that has diabetic ketoacidosis. Other causes of increased um, ketones are you can have an alcoholic ketoacidosis or a starvation ketoacidosis where you have a person that is not taking in um, enough uh, carbohydrates to and all the meta metabolism has shifted to lipid metabolism. So um, think about DKA um, and then uremia. Do you have a patient that in, in severe acute or chronic renal failure? Um, same thing with phosphoric acid as well. It's usually going to come from, from renal failure. So typically, if you just differentiate by endogenous and exogenous um, by history, you can you can rule things out. And it will also help you remember what to think about. Um, I would only start thinking about the exogenous acids if you've kind of ruled out the endogenous or you think it's unlikely because of history. And then you can kind of go to your mud piles um, mnemonic. Okay. So let's talk about the mud piles mnemonic.
And again, I would only use this if you've already sort of thought through the um, whether it's endogenous or exogenous. So mud piles, M stands for methanol. It's an exogenous acid. U stands for uremia. An endogenous acid. D stands for DKA. And when you're thinking about DKA, you can just think about the other causes of ketosis, starvation, alcoholic, etc. The P stands for paracetamol, which is the sort of European term for Tylenol, and also can be peraldehyde. And then I stands for isonazid and iron. The L stands for lactic acidosis. And again, this is one of our endogenous acids. E stands for ethylene glycol. And it also can stand for ethanol, but ethanol is actually um, typically a, it's a secondary cause caused by an increase of ketones. So it's, uh, again, our alcoholic ketosis. And then S stands for salicylate. Okay, so that's that's mud piles. And you, you can memorize it, but I think it's a lot easier to first sort of go through your endogenous acids and then start to think about whether, whether it's possible based on history that there could be either um, a toxicity from overdose or an ingestion of a toxic substance. And that's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.